good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I will um, focus. So my presentation is focused on uh, a discussion of some of the insights uh, we got from uh, uh, Preston's presentation, and uh, and I will then try to draw some implications for online advertising, which is the topic of the session. Um, so I will not enter into the first part of Preston's presentation, which was actually added after yesterday's uh, intervention, so I will not enter the War of the Roses, let's say. Uh, <laughs> I will just focus on more technical aspects of uh, uh, Preston's presentation. And uh, so let me uh, first uh, summarize what the paper does. Well, actually, there's no paper yet, but I guess there will be a very nice one soon, uh, so uh, on the presentation, actually. Um, so, there are three analyses, as you can see, which are somehow complementary, and they are all intended to show the importance of scale, of actually scaling uh, economies in uh, data gathering for search engine um, markets. And um, so, this, I think, is a very crucial issue, actually, perhaps it's the crucial issue in the most crucial issues, issue in the search platform markets, because as Preston said, uh, search engines are enormous matching programs, and therefore data is a crucial input. So it is very important to understand how, so what's the role played by uh, data, and, um, and the issue that data from past searches is used to update and improve uh, the uh, outcome of the search engine uh, algorithm and, uh, and therefore the quality of the service that the search engine provides, I think is actually probably the most crucial issue. And I don't, I'm not aware of any paper who try to quantify this. And from the point of view of you know, an empirical researcher, I think that's a very crucial issue. So I really uh, appreciate uh, the contribution because it's not important. So we all know that scale matters, but it's important to quantify, try to quantify uh, these effects. So let me first uh, uh, go uh, and talk a little bit about uh, each of the three analyses. So the first one is the analysis on the trend of rare queries and the um, variable of interest here is the increase in the click-through rate for these rare queries. And, and the finding is that actually the click-through rate growth is larger for a larger uh, search engine, which is Google, than for Bing. So that's the main uh, result, that's the main take uh, out of this part of the analysis. So I have a few remarks on this. The first one is that I think this is, again, a really relevant uh, issue because uh, so gathering data in, is important, but it is especially true for rare queries. And, uh, and notice that the, the rare queries that uh, uh, Preston is talking about are not uh, uh, like wrong queries. They are really new queries, so queries on which there's a pattern of growth over time, which I think it's crucial to, if you want to really capture the dynamics. Uh, so this is where the dynamics takes place, and this is why I think this is important, okay? Um, and actually, I think that the issue might, so the effect might be even larger than the one that uh, uh, Preston measures, because uh, press, the, the, I think with the data you have, you, you are able to measure, uh, you know, the different growth. But actually, there might be a different level to start with, because I think of, you know, behavior of consumers. I might be pretty indifferent if I have to search for, for a very general query. Uh, might be pretty indifferent between Google and Bing. But if I have to search for a very specific query, I might choose Google anticipating that the search results are going to be better. So if, if you really have the total of searches on each of the two search engines, you might find an even larger gap uh, than the one you get with your data, because you, in your data you only have a portion of Google data. So I think that's uh, you know, a bias that might be even larger from the start, some sort of you know, selection bias in a sense. 
Um, well, on the direct and indirect view count analysis, uh, well, this is uh, the, the outcome variable here is the success click-through rate. And the idea is that uh, the more data you have on new queries, the more you accumulate in direct data, and therefore the better, uh, so the more uh, success click-through rate you, you have. And uh, I just have a very uh, perhaps technical comment here, uh, which has to do with something that you didn't show or didn't talk about in the slides, which is uh, the relationship between direct and indirect, because you put them both in the regression, but I think, so if you want to explain um, direct with indirect, so I would rather think that the relation between direct and indirect in order to solve the collinearity should, would be that indirect queries influence direct rather than the opposite because it seems to me that, you know, it's data on indirect queries that uh, helps you improve uh, the quality of response to new queries rather than the opposite. So I'd rather, you know, uh, regress direct on indirect and maybe use it as a, you know, kind of first stage for the other equation. Uh, finally, on the click position analysis, so the outcome variable here of this analysis is the um, click position. And the, uh, the thing that he, uh, the person wants to analyze here is the effect of direct view counts on uh, click position. And, uh, and it, he actually shows that the more data you have, the better the ranking becomes. And therefore, the better, so the higher position uh, URLs are uh, so the better URLs are pushed to the top, more and more, okay? So I, the main remark I have here has to do with endogeneity. Uh, we, so it, it's well established now in the literature that uh, uh, the position affects the number of clicks. So if you really want to measure uh, the effect, the importance of, uh, you know, clicks or direct view counts on the, the position, you have to somehow address the issue of endogeneity. Uh, I actually mentioned here a few papers that deal with the issue of endogeneity and I actually measure the importance of um, position uh, to determine, as a determinant of traffic. There's also uh, the paper that Susan was, uh, so the, pa the paper by Susan that she was talking about yesterday. So, I think that's really an important issue and, um, and therefore it's, I don't know, I, I think you um, well, may want to think about, about it uh, and, uh, and also uh, about the fact that there is actually uh, evidence of the fact that not only uh, positioning but also firm reputation it matters uh, for, uh, to determine uh, the results of organic traffic. So they are both important determinants. So there's a paper, recent paper by Bay and co-authors that show precisely this. So the uh, fact that uh, reputation and position actually determine organic traffic. And finally, again here, uh, so you showed us before that both direct and indirect clicks are important, but I see that indirect clicks are missing here in this analysis, so I wonder whether you can somehow incorporate them. So, implications. Um, so, you talk about economies of scale, but it seems to me that this is, a, uh, well, as, we, as it was already discussed yesterday, this is more a matter of uh, demand side rather than uh, supply side economies of scale. There is no issue of costs here, or maybe there is, but it's not so evident from the analysis. Uh, so actually, the main source of, economy, of scale economies here is indirect network effects. So the fact that more people use a search engine, then you, the search engine gets more data and this uh, um, in turn leads to a better quality of results. Um, the effect, I think the con what's nice in the contribution is showing that this effect is even stronger for rare and especially for new queries, uh, which account for uh, quite a large part of queries and actually, well, as I will discuss later, these might be queries, valuable queries, also in terms of advertising. 
um, well, what's the, what do we expect? So what, did, what is the implication in terms of market structure? So we know that when you have a lot of indirect network effects and you have products that are essentially homogeneous, like here. I don't see much scope for product differentiation here. So essentially, consumers that go on a search engine search, I mean, what they want is relevant results. I don't see much scope for product differentiation. So the outcome that I would expect is an outcome where there is a dominant firm or monopoly outcome. So I don't, I'm not saying that this is necessarily bad, but I see that this is a, somehow a natural outcome in this kind of industry. Um, but let me talk a little bit about the role of advertising, because that's, I think, the missing piece in, uh, in, a, in this market, which is uh, a two-sided market. So here we have not only uh, people that go on the, on the search engine and search, but we also have advertisers who, um, who also uh, are in the picture. And uh, so the, uh, the picture you see here reminds of the picture that Hal showed yesterday, uh, which uh, has to do with the, this kind of uh, uh, circles uh, that you uh, might have in these uh, industries where you have the, the fact that larger user base uh, together with the fact that uh, uh, it allows you to get more data and data are also valuable to advertisers because they allow them to provide to, to do better matching and better targeting these two things attract more advertisers so you get more advertising revenues and this in turn might lead to further increases in the user base. Uh, so this might generate um, this kind of uh, uh, cir circularity, which uh, in the media literature is known as the circulation spiral, whereby you have a newspaper which gets more advertisers, more revenues from advertising, better you know, improvement in products, and then more readers. So that's, that's a circulation spiral. Actually, there are some conditions that need to be fulfilled in order for this spiral or circle to take place. And these conditions in two-sided markets have to do with indirect network effects. So they have to do with the um, um, degree to which there are network effects, indirect network effects, sorry, intermarket network effects. So feedbacks across the two sides of the market. So I want to spend the last part of my presentation on discussing uh, how different these feedbacks are in online markets and in particular on, in search uh, markets than in offline markets. So one, the main difference I, stay, I see is the fact that online advertising is, uh, uh, so uh, online, uh, yeah, online advertising, Advertising allows targeting more than offline advertising. And um, in principle, one can, could think that uh, other things being equal, targeted advertising are less intrusive to uh, consumers somehow. Although there is also evidence of the fact that the, um, targeted advertising, if they are really very intrusive, can be, uh, so consumers might be even more averse to targeted advertising when they are very intrusive. But this evidence that I was mentioning is uh, showed in a paper by Goldfarb and Tucker and has to do with display advertising. So there is uh, quite a lot of evidence on the degree to which uh, consumers uh, are annoyed uh, about, uh, by online, um, sorry, by display advertising. Uh, including a paper by Preston, uh, but there, there is not so much evidence about uh, uh, consumer attitude towards search advertising. So there is some evidence, so there's quite a lot of evidence on search advertising, on the effectiveness of search advertising, including a paper uh, by Blake and Kothos, which was, which was just published on Econometrica. Uh, and this evidence seems to go in the direction of saying that Search advertising is mostly informative. And, and actually what they show, they show that uh, search advertising seem to be, 
to get uh, to to have an objective and to get as a result the effect of attracting new and unfrequent users rather than uh, being effective on frequent users so it seems to convey the idea that search advertising is mostly informative in, in scope um, there's also some evidence, for instance, a paper by Young and Goes, uh, showing that, uh, positive, that there is a positive interdependence between search and organic ads. Uh, and in particular, they show that uh, uh, click-through rate on organic listings is, are higher when uh, search advertising is present. So these seem to um, somehow uh, give support to the idea that there is a positive interdependence between these two sides of the market and uh, so somehow one could think that there are positive feedbacks between these two sides. Um, moreover, well, this might be due to the fact that search advertising might somehow contribute to the quality of search results. And this might be true especially for new products, for rare or new products. Um, where the information on, on, on one, where the results on, of organic search, search might be uh, scarcer. Um, finally, uh, last remark that I wanted to make, I wonder whether one can think that ads on uh, rare queries or perhaps new queries are more valuable than uh, ads on general queries. Uh, and again, um, I, I, I know there's a paper that uh, shows that uh, um, actually less popular keywords are keywords that are searched by consumer, consumers that are actually already pretty close to buying. So somehow, if you think of you know, commercial, commercial queries, you might think that uh, you know, very specific and rare queries are even more valuable to uh, consumers. <laughs> Uh, sorry, to advertisers, and therefore, well, if you're a search engine that manages to attract more of these rare queries, maybe you have a further advantage in terms of uh, search advertising. Um, okay. So I think that's so, so, uh, uh, I'm done. Uh, th there's a lot of open issues, and this is actually a field in which I mean, this, I think this is a fantastic field for people who work in, who, who do empirical research because that's precisely because there's a lot of data available. So, and there are also several issues that are still, mm, I mean, that still need to be uh, investigated further. So the, the main issue is that the value of data goes beyond search. So the value of the information on consumers not only for advertising in terms of search advertising, but also for direct marketing or profiling. So the spillover effects that information can give uh, to firms that collect data on consumers, something that we might uh, hear about uh, something about in the next uh, session. And um, I think also long run effects are still under investigated, especially if I look to the uh, recent literature on online advertising, most papers look at very short-run effects of advertising, like effectiveness of advertising. But I think it's also very important to look at, you know, more dynamic and long-run aspects of, uh, you know, capturing new users, new customers. Finally, I think uh, implications of multi-homing are still under-investigated. Uh, Susan told us about uh, yesterday about... Uh, a little bit about uh, uh, multi-homing uh, by advertisers uh, in a paper with Emilio. And um, so we know that multi-homing by advertisers is important and should be investigated perhaps even from an empirical point of view. And also uh, by consumers. Uh, again, I see this more as an empirical issue than a theoretical issue because we know that, you know, we don't know actually to which extent consumers do multi-home across platforms. Uh, and this would have very important implications also for uh, advertising, uh, advertisers multi-homing. And uh, so that's, I think, it's also an important issue to, to be investigated. So thank you very much.